Welcome to a tour of the YMC Contichrome Twin LPLC system. Let us illustrate some of the key components and features built into this highly productive multi-column chromatography platform. This system is designed for the continuous purification of biopharmaceutical therapeutic proteins, such as monoclonal antibodies, using two columns. It also has the capability of performing conventional single column batch operations. Its primary use is in the capture or affinity chromatography step, but also can be used in ion exchange or polishing steps. Users of our two column process have documented that they can reduce the use of protein A resin and buffers by up to 60% or productivity nearly threefold. This model is equipped with two pumps, one dedicated for buffers and the other for feed. This system is capable to execute traditional batch and continuous capture chromatography. Adding an optional third pump would enable the user to execute buffer inline dilution and sequential chromatography. This tour features our intermediate scale Model 500 with flows up to 10 liters per minute. To accommodate a large range of chromatography sizes, the Contichrome Twin family has four standard models with flows up to 20 liters per minute. Major components you will see on the tour are as follows. Drain header, inlet valves, inlets, pumps, flow meters, column valves, UV, pH conductivity array, motor control panel, e-stop and alarms, analytics displays, HMI, and the control panel. Before we start our walkthrough of the Twin 500, let's take a look at the PNID as it would appear on the system's HMI screen. The flow paths shown on the HMI will be our roadmap guiding us through the system. Our tour will start on the pump inlet valves where buffers and feeds are introduced. On this model, the buffer pump has six different inlets. The feed pump has four different inlet valves with one dedicated for the feed stream. Air sensors are installed in between the inlets and the pumps. Downstream of the pumps are pressure sensors and flow meters that are used to control the process flow rates. We'll come back to the PNID, but first, let's take a look at this first part of the unit. The inlet valves are conveniently located at waist level. Now, looking closer at the inlet connection array, on the left, up to six different buffers are connected, leading to the inlet valve block of the buffer pump. On the right, the feed and up to three different buffers are connected, leading to the inlet valve of the feed pump. To ensure drainability on suction side of the pump, drain valves are installed on the inlet valve blocks. From the inlet valve block, solution is passed through an air sensor to the triplex pump. Using this proprietary Y formation distribution pipe ensures even flow to and from each of the pump heads. The triplex pump diaphragm metering pumps are driven by a single servo motor which enables the delivery of a very precise flow across large operating ranges. On the discharge side of the pumps, there are drain valves which support the priming of the pumps. Also here are pressure sensors. Following are the Coriolis flow meters, which are operated in a control loop with the pumps. Beyond the flow meters, pressure regulating valves are installed. The pressure regulating valves allow reliable pump performance independent of the tank arrangement on the suction side of the pump. Towards the end of this section of the flow path, behind the pumps, there's another drain valve, enabling quick buffer changeovers and pressure sensors prior to the first Robolux valve. Now we have completed the first part of our tour. Let's take another look at our HMI roadmap. Thus far, we've traveled from the inlet valves to the pumps, past the flow meter on the way to the first Robolux valve. Now we find ourselves into the heart of the system, the unique valves that enable the continuous operation of two columns. Here we find two specialized six port valve blocks called Robolux. These valves have extremely minimal internal holdup volumes 
and they direct flows in such a manner to allow the operation of the columns in parallel or in such a manner that flow from one column enters directly into the other column. The system is also equipped with directional valves, which enable the flow of the columns in either an up or a down flow manner, as well as in column bypass. Okay, let's take an actual look at this section. The first Robolux valve directs the flows coming from the buffer and feed pumps to either one of the columns, in parallel or in sequence. Here, the flow leaves in the direction of column one, first passing through the pre-column pressure gauge, an air sensor, and into the directional valve of the column, where column one can either be bypassed or the flow directed to the column in an up or down direction. Leaving the column, one finds a sensor array, which is comprised of conductivity, pH, and a dual wavelength UV detector. The flow passes the column outlet pressure gauge before entering the second Robolux valve, where the flow is sent to either the outlets or back to the first Robolux valve. In this example, the flow is directed back into the first Robolux valve. There are two separate return lines, one connecting column one to column two, and the second for connecting column two to column one. Depending which column is in the first position, one of the two return lines is used. Starting at the first Robolux valve, the flow is directed into either column. Assuming the flow is coming from column two, it now proceeds to column one. The flow can also be in parallel. One column is loaded while the other column is eluded. In the layout of the systems, a great deal of care was taken to ensure a symmetric design. Completing our walkthrough of the fluid hardware side of the unit, the system is also equipped with parallel outlets. One is a single valve and the other is a fractionation valve. On the system, the outlet valves are located near the outside of the frame. The system shown here has only two fraction ports. However, there is an option to have up to five fraction ports. Of course, a compressed air inlet is available for blowdown. Here are the actual inlet valve and filter. This line can be connected to the pump inlets to enable efficient blowdown to drain, as well as to dry the system. That completes the introduction to the flow path of this Conti Chrome Twin 500 system. Let's now take a brief look at the control panel. The system is built on the Allen Bradley Rockwell automation platform and features a 20 inch touchscreen HMI, which can be linked to your preferred keyboard and or remote monitoring device. The PLC base unit has USP backup and PI Historian, among other features that make this system support compliance to 21 CFR Part 11. On the side of the control panel, there are controllers for UV, pH, and conductivity sensors with a self-contained readout. They are handy for calibrating the detectors. In the front, there are dual USB ports and an ethernet connection, as well as the e-stop, master reset button, and alarm indicators. So this is a sophisticated but simple system that delivers a significant gain in productivity and cost savings in the production of highly valuable biopharmaceuticals. It's thoughtfully designed with user input to be applicable to the global regulated market with rigorous documentation and certifications. The four models in the standard platform range from 0.2 liters per minute to 20 liters per minute. We offer a complete range from scale down bench systems to pilot units to higher capacity systems and offer additional functionality, which is available in custom designs also from YMC. Thank you for your time. We'd love to show you a live demo. Just contact us at info at ymcpt.com. Thank you.